All right. I got counting, and I have been to, this is my 10th 140 conference. <laughs> Obviously, there is something wrong with me that I've been to 10 140 conferences. And I realized that my perspective is a little different than someone that's coming to their first 140 conference. So I've invited my nephew, Colton Foote, who some of you met last year because he came with me last year. Um, but that was his first 140 conference, and I thought I'd ask him to share just a little bit about what he learned at his first 140 conference from someone that's definitely not a big Twitter head. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was definitely really cool. I learned a lot. And on top of meeting some really amazing people, I got a front row seat as they talked about how they used social media to promote their business or their fundraiser or their group or whatever. I also liked how fast paced it was. I learned a lot. It was really interesting. So was there anyone that really stood out for you that was really memorable? I would have to say Ann Curry. And she talked about how, business, or how journalism is a state of now. And it was interesting to me because it was Ann Curry. And you know I've always just seen her on TV. And she was speaking right in front of me. It was and, really interesting. And you were like right there. Right there, yeah. <laughs> pretty cool, pretty yeah. cool. OK, great. I would like a round of applause for Colton, his public speaking debut. Thank you. Nothing like making your public speaking debut in New York City on the stage at the 92nd Street Y, <laughs> right? So it's pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, I decided that in 10 140 conferences, I really don't talk very much about my liquor store. And I almost never give social media tips. So I thought I would do both of those today, just as a change from my usual. I really do own a liquor store in a small town. I've been there. You've been, and been and there. a few of you have been there. A few of you have been there. In it's the Sonic. in the Sonic. We did go to Sonic and Alva. Yeah, we did the whole Sonic. Alva tour. There's some, there is some relevance from that to social media for you. Because it can be really intimidating to get started in social media. When you either start for the first time or you start a new account for a client or you have to start all over on a new network and rebuild that friends list, it can be really intimidating to be holding your smartphone and looking at it or staring at that blank space where you need to put in your, your update you can be at a loss for words. It can happen. So here is a suggestion of a way to think about that. And think of yourself as owning the small town store. You're going to set up your own store online. And there's a, there's a reason for that. It's because some of the things that we do in a small town store are very much the same what you should do in social media. And the first one of those is that you should build connections. We spend a lot more time in our store talking one-on-one -on -one and building individual connections than we do broadcasting a message to thousands of people because that's simply not how our business works. It's all one-on-one. -on -one. You can do the same thing online. You do not have to broadcast to the thousands. You can build the connection with the one. The second thing that we do is we get involved. So if there are community events, then we try to go. If there are fundraisers, we try to support them. You can do this online. If there's an online community project like a group, fund or a group fundraiser or a group writing project, jump in, be involved, be part of that. So that's part of that store owner mentality. The third one is to think long term. Because that long term perspective, I've owned my store for just six years. See, just six years. That's an eternity in internet time. But in the life of a small town store, six years is like nothing. My mother owned it for 14 years before that. So I have actually been involved in that store for 20 long years. And I have learned that that kind of long term perspective makes a difference in people's minds as they think about our store. They know that we have been there for a long time. The other store gets called the new store because it changed hands five years ago. So they changed hands more recently than we did. But you can have this long-term perspective online. Six years is an eternity, but we all have a tendency to jump to the next new shiny object way too quickly. So it's better for you to take a long-term perspective, think about building a storefront where you are, rather than jumping to the next new thing as soon as you can. So think long-term, and then you need to be helpful. Be helpful. It's really easy to have that helpful attitude in a small town store. We give a lot of information when someone wants to buy wine for the first time, which happens. You know, it's really great when the little old ladies come in for the first time to make a wine purchase because the doctor said they needed it for their high blood pressure. Then, you know, those ladies are great to work with, and we will share all the information as cheerfully as we possibly can. Uh, but 
we'll carry their purchase to their car. We carry things that people like just because they like them. Try to have that kind of helpful attitude online and share as much information as you can with people in a helpful way. Now, sometimes we get sucked into the giving our work away for free. Now, keep in mind, we never, we never give the liquor away for free, but we'll give all the information away for free. Make sure you know where your line is and what you will give for free and what not to. Now, the last one is to be honest. If you drop a $20 bill in our store, we will give it back to you. It happens more frequently than you would think, actually, that somebody will drop something. We always return it. We always act honestly. We always act as though anything could be found out and be on the front page of the newspaper tomorrow because it's a small town, and you know what? It could be on the front page of the newspaper tomorrow. And if you'll take that kind of honest attitude with you online and assume that everything will be found out, then you will never, you will never find yourself doing things you don't want people to find out about and then find yourself in the awkward position of, uh-oh, they did find out about it. So take that honest attitude. So just build your own little liquor store in your mind. Now, some of you are skeptical, right? Some of you are thinking, this does not apply to my business. My business is too big, too urban, too large, too whatever for this to possibly work. But let me tell you, your business is operating in an environment just like a small town now. See, the economy is a lot more like a small town than it's ever been before. That up and down and uncertain and flat, stagnant economy, that is just like my small town economy. Really tight lending that you're dealing with now, that is just like my small town economy. Really scarce jobs, just like a small town. Are you seeing the pattern? Is it sinking in? So besides the economy, then we have communication technology that is just really changing the, fa the way that everyone interacts. Every one of your customers can talk to every other one of your customers immediately. Now that's always been true for my store, but it's true for, for your business, no matter how big it is now. And finally, finally we have, uh, we have society and we have the way people think and act. We used to all pay more attention to the national brands as indicators of quality. But as recently as 2011, American Express found that people are more trusting now of small businesses to provide better customer service. So they are shifting their shopping dollars. This is important for you to know. These are your customers who are acting more like they live in a small town. They are more focused on the local and the small. So every one of you, no matter how large your business is, no matter how urban it is, no matter where it's based, has to deal with a very small town-like economy and technology and society. So it's affecting every one of you. So build that little store in your head. If you'd like a little more insight into the small town mind, I, you can stop by beckymccray.com. There's a link to my book with uh, Barry Moltz as my co-author. It's called Small Town Rules. And we look at those three big factors uh, of how your life is more like a small town life, no matter where you live now. And we also have a link to the Small Town State of Now Conference, because that's, we have the new name, Small Town 140 State of Now Conference, November 8th in Hutchinson, Kansas. So all my small town folks, I hope to see you there. I hope you'll all come out. It's going to be a great time. That's November 8th in Hutchinson, Kansas. If you want to find out more about those things, it's at beckymccray.com. Never give up the wonderful things that you learned growing up in a small town or a small neighborhood or part of a small group because those are the things that make you the most competitive in today's economy. Thank you. <laughs>